Hey everyone, it's Alexis. I hope you are doing well today. I am really excited because we all know I'm addicted to flowers. Everything floral, just hand it my way. I know Jess Slack is also equally is in love with anything floral as I am. And in chapter one, we have this beautiful big sty that is from Jen Ogborn and uh, that's coming out called Cabbage Rose. And we wanted to walk you through not only how to assemble this today, but also because it's a big sty, to show you the versatility of how many different surfaces you can actually cut using our big styes. Now we are working with a flower, so there might be some limitations as far as the types of surfaces you would use to actually create this flower. But um, nonetheless, I've got a wide variety of ideas for you um, as far as the different surfaces you can cut. And I'm going to show you how to assemble this both in felt and using our texture roll. So I'm gonna to switch to an overhead camera and walk you through all the ins and outs of this beautiful new die of them called Cabbage Rose. So before we get into assembly, I kind of want to talk through the actual flower itself, but also the technology of big styes. So if you aren't familiar with the big sty, um, these are what they look like out of packaging. They have a nice lovely foam here on top, but embedded in the foam is a steel rule blade. And because it's steel, you really can cut through a variety of surfaces. Um, so I've actually got our, some of our neutral felt here, which um, we I wanted to show like what it looked like in a whole color way of our felt, because we have our felt in four different packs. We have the neutral pack, the festive pack, and then we also have them in pastels and bold. Um, so you get a really nice variety of different felt colors and obviously just look how stunning all those look even just on a board. Um, I think that flowers are something that is very evergreen. So even though this feels like a spring floral, I do feel like flowers in general just changing out the color of the bloom really can change it to align to whatever season you might be in. So this is the, the dye in packaging um, when you see it in the stores and you can see it has a nice lovely spring tone to it. I've actually got those flowers right here. So you can see how they look just as nice in like a light shade of pink. Uh, this is our sorbet and this is cherry blossom and then this is the ballet slipper. Those are all from our pastel felt packs. So they definitely look great in any colorway. I did a really unique, very brightly toned uh, bouquet of felt flowers to show you. I just wanted to show something totally different than what you probably would expect to see. But then I also got to thinking, big styes don't often get their time in the sun because I think a lot of people think, oh, they're just for soft crafts and quilting and things like that and applique. But you can also do home decor. You could also incorporate these on scrapbook pages um, and cards if you wanted to. Obviously, they would be very dimensional cards and scrapbook pages. But I think the size of these is definitely geared more towards um, like an actual home decor piece like making flowers. Now, I did want to show you all the different surfaces that you can cut through with a big sty. So we've got this lovely little ring of different surfaces and substrates um, that Debbie Farinella has prepared for me decades ago, it feels like. But um, she went through and basically cut out as many different things as she could to show like all the different ways and all the different things that you can cut with the big die. So I just wanted to highlight a few of them. Obviously they can cut through a lot of our Sizzix surfaces such as the texture roll, cardstock, felt, sculpting foam. Um, but they can also cut through foam core. There's a light like balsa wood right here. Um, so you can cut through thin layers of wood. We've got some more felt right here. This is like a suede material. We've got some really thick foam core, so you can cut through foam for sure. You can cut through um, acetate and uh, shrink plastic and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Our packaging even, if you wanted to repurpose the plastic packaging. We've got some sponge right here, which would be really cute if you're making uh, any of these kind of shapes. You could do little sponges for bath time with the kids. Um, You've got cork in here somewhere. We've got layers and layers of tissue paper. 
uh, you can cut through mat board and chipboard, You've got canvas, so you can cut through fabric, and you can cut through multiple layers of these. I think I forgot to mention that. The nice thing with bigs is because of the steel rule, you can actually cut through multiple layers of whatever surface you're cutting through. So for example, today, I'm gonna cut my, my felt and I'm gonna cut two at a time, but realistically, I probably could cut about three, maybe four. It all depends on the thickness of the actual uh, surface that you're cutting from, but there really is a lot of versatility. Like if you have a thin layer of fabric, you can cut through about six to seven layers of that at a time. If it's a thicker fabric, maybe a little bit less. This is actually a magnet sheet right here. Um, and you've got burlap right here. This is sandpaper. Um, this is vinyl. So it cuts through a ton of different materials. This is our mixed media board. Um, and it can even cut through leather. So uh, very thin leather, I would say. Um, aluminum, you name it. There is a list online of all the different surfaces that you can cut from a bigs. You can find that on our websites. Um, today I'm going to primarily focus on our texture rolls and our Sizzix felt. So those are the two that I'm going to show you in the video, um, but you can also use our cardstock and I'm going to show you a sculpting technique with the cardstock. So the first thing I want to do is actually cut it out. So I'm going to bring in my machine. I've got my glue gun accessory pad right here for when it's time to start gluing. I've got everything, I've got my glue gun heating up off to the side. Because honestly, when you're putting this flower together, I find that um, hot glue is, quite frankly, the best way to go. It's quick and efficient, but you can use uh, regular just liquid adhesive as well. So with the Big Die, the sandwich, when you're cutting it on any of our Big Shot machines, so I'm using the Big Shot um, right here, but if you were to cut this on the Fold Away or the Plus, um, you can also, it's the same sandwich. So you basically put your first cutting pad down, then you put the die with the blade facing up, and then I've got my felt. Now I only am gonna put together one, but I wanna show you how easily it cuts through two thick layers of, it's a pretty thick felt. Um, so I'm gonna lay that on there. And then my to finish my Sizzix sandwich, I just need one more top cutting mat. So I'm gonna run this through. Normally you only need to run it through once, but because I am cutting through a thicker felt, I'm just gonna hold it in place as I run it back through. And that just really makes sure that that blade cut through. So what's nice about this is hopefully it'll come right out, which it is. It's just because there's two there that it gets a little messy. But I've got this lovely little um, piece right there, which you're going to want at least two of those. So I'm going to get my, I'm trying to pull them out of here. <laughs> They're getting a little, uh, little tangled up because it is a rosette style floral. So I'm just going to pull them out here over off to the side. Okay, so I've got my one flower in a rosette style, and then you've got one piece. Now you're going to want to cut two of these, but because I did go ahead and cut two, I've already got my other one ready here off to the side. And then I've already cut, um, pre-cut I should say, one in a texture roll. So I'll show you how, little tips for the different surfaces and what you can do with them. So what I'm going to do is show you how to assemble this. Just give me one second. I'm grabbing my, my glue off to the side here. Okay. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to want to have a pair of tweezers. And I prefer to use my reverse action tweezers, but I only, oh, yeah, there. I've got a pair right here. I thought I only had my other ones. Um, but what I'm going to do is take my reverse action tweezers because you're going to roll this in on itself. When it's a rosette style like this, you're going to roll, um, you're going to roll the flower in on itself. So I'm going to take my tweezers and get a nice grip right here and just start slowly spinning it. And what I'm doing is just making sure that the bottom edge, the flat edge of this continues to wrap around and line up on the layer below it. 
so that I get a really nice even bottom. Um, and then I'm just trying to make sure that my flowers, the petals are kind of falling in different areas as I go. And you can always loosen this up if you want to. The nice thing with felt is it's a very forgiving surface. So when you get to this point where you're towards the tail end, what you're gonna do is gently release that. And then I always put glue right here. And you don't usually need a lot of hot glue when you're working with felt, but I want to make sure that it gets the entirety of that bottom edge. And then you take the last petal and you wrap this around until it perfectly lays over the top like that. Now, if you are someone who constantly burns your fingers when you're working with hot glue, our glue gun accessory kit is beautiful. Um, I will normally, especially when I'm working with flowers like this and I want to just hold it in place and I, the glue will seep out sometimes. So what I will do is just put this bigger one on my thumb so that I can hold it in place while it sets. Then I'm going to add in my two other leaves or not leaves, petals, I should say. And what I'm going to do is just put a dab of glue right here in the middle and then I'm going to put this on in an X shape. So I'm going to put the first one on going one direction. And then I'm going to add a little glue to my other petal. And I'm going to do the opposite. Now that looks a little weird. Like it could be an opening flower. But what I do is I add little pieces of glue to pull this petal up just so that it feels like it's a tightly wound um, floral. So I just go in with those and I'll put a little dab of glue and then push it up into the petals above just so it makes it feel more full. Okay. And then you've got this beautiful full looking flower. Now what I wanted to do is you can add that to a wreath. You could add that to a banner that you might be hanging up in your house for the spring. I wanted to make actual flowers to go into a bouquet. So I've added all of mine on to floral wire. Now I've already prepped my floral wire and cut it to the height I wanted to. And then what I did was take the end of it, and I'm just going to show you on this one, and slowly wrap this in on itself in a cylinder almost until I got a shape like a uh, shape like this. Let me see if it'll focus. I don't know if it'll focus. Hold on. There we go. So you want it to look kind of like a cylinder like that. And then I would take this and I'd flatten out that edge. So then you get something that looks like this. Um, I've already done the other side, so I'm just going to unflatten this. <laughs> but what I do, and you have to have a little bit of patience with this, is I always put a dab of glue on the bottom, and then I'll put that cylinder style one, the circle, in, and then I'll put a little bit more glue on top of it. And that just really seals it in. And here's the thing, you, if you're doing this one by one, you're gonna have to sit and hold it until it dries. Now what I do is I usually have like a box or something standing nearby and I'll lean this stem up against it so that while I'm working on others, other ones can be drying. So I'm gonna do that off camera. I'm gonna lean that up against something, but I'm gonna show you what a whole bouquet of them looks like when you've added them all and they've all dried. So I've taken a very bright color palette, if you will, um, and I've chosen flowers from pretty much all of our uh, different felt packs. So we've got some in here. These two are from our festive pack. These ones are from our uh, pastel pack. This one is from our bolds. I didn't do any from the neutral because I wanted them all to be really colorful, but it just shows how you can take a bunch of these and then make them in mass, like cut everything, assemble them all, and then you can just put them into a nice little vase and change them out seasonally in your house. 
Um, I also think this is a really great project to do with kids. Obviously, they'll need a little bit help with the glue, but if you've got um, any little kids that like to have flowers around their room, I think that'd be a fun little project to do with them. Now, I did want to show you one other surface um, real quick, and this is our texture roll. I'm using the Lemon Cello um, texture roll, and these come in six inch. They'll cut through beautifully. Let me get this focused in again. Um, and they work the same way as the felt as far as how you're going to roll them in on itself. Now, when you're working with something that's a little bit stiffer, doesn't have as much give, this is what I, this is what I would recommend. You kind of want to start rolling it in um, so it gets a little bit more of a curve. So I'm using our fold and form tool and I'm just following that line and trying to get these so they are a little bit more of a curvature so that they'll twist in on themselves easier. So instead of it being stiff, now it's going to have that natural curve that we need in order for it to go in a circular pattern. So I will, I'll get the shape going like that just so that it makes my life easier when I go to actually wind them in on my tweezer. So you're still going to have a little bit of resistance when you do these, but it's all just about bending and forming it as you go. So as you get to each petal, it's just about pushing in with your fingers so that you can really get that nice natural shape. So I, I love the reverse action tweezers because it holds that center in place so that I can just keep working my way around and I don't even have to do anything because it's holding it for me. And I just keep winding around and you'll notice I'm doing it very tight and there's a reason for that. It's because I want to get these petals shaped in a natural round shape. So when I get to the end, I'm pushing in with all these fingers just so that it forms a really nice stem in the middle, or not stem, but flower petal in the middle. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out my uh, tweezers. I'm going to let it loosen up just a little bit, not too much. Um, and the reason for that is I don't want it to be too loose because then the glue shows underneath. But I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to add my glue just along the bottom right here. Same as I did last time, but with this, because it doesn't grasp the glue quite as quickly as the felt does, you have time to kind of maneuver around your shapes and tighten them up or loosen them however you want to. So I like to tighten mine up a little bit. And I'm just going to hold that in place for a minute while it, <laughs> it attaches, we'll say. And I'm going to set that off to the side. Now, before I add these other petals on, I want to get that same curvature. So I'm going to take my fold and form again, and I'm going to place that in between the two little prongs right here. And I'm just going to gently curve those petals up to give them a little bit more of a realistic effect. And then I'm also going to do it from the center to get that nice petal curvature so it closes in on the other flowers. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing where I add glue to the center and then I'm going to place it in and I'm just doing this on top of my, this is a Teflon mat, um, or not Teflon, sorry, a silicone mat. So it is really nice when you're working with the glue gun because it won't destroy your working surface, and once it's glue, it peels or it dries. It peels right off. So I love pulling out my glue gun accessories when I'm working with the glue guns. So I'm just giving them some natural. And what I love about the textural, you can see I'm really, like I'm really pulling on this, and it's not ripping. That's why I love working with textural. It's a really stiff surface, but it's perfect. Um, when you need something to be a little bit more indestructible. So now I'm just placing that in the center right there. And then because this feels so wide and open, what I'm going to do is take my tweezers and gently kind of manipulate the top of the petals and form them so that they 
pull out to make it feel like a more open bloom. You don't have to do this. It's just something I like to do to make it feel like it's all filled in. You can just pick little corners that you want, want to do. You don't have to do the whole petal, but it's just a nice way to create more a more organic shape when you're working with stiffer surfaces. So especially for cardstock and something like this, you're gonna probably wanna do a little bit more sculpting after you've assembled, whereas with felt and fabric, it's gonna already naturally do that. So I'm not gonna put that one onto a petal, or not a petal, but a stem, because I've already done these ones on the stems, but I did it the exact same way um, as I did the felt ones. But as you can see, once you add them, you can do a lovely little bouquet even using texture roll. Okay, well that's how you assemble the cabbage rose. I'm going to switch back up to my um, face cam. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed that little tutorial on how to put together our cabbage rose from chapter one. It is by Jen Ogborn, looks like this, and it is 665 eight two four. Um, if you want to purchase any of the items you've seen in this video today, whether it's the texture rolls or the felt, or the glue gun accessories, the dye itself, you can use my share code and get 20% off. So if you use Alexis 20 at your checkout online, um, it'll give you a discount on all of the products that you can get from this video. So if you have any questions about um, assembly or different surfaces that you are curious about, if the big stack can cut, please put them in the comments and we will be happy to get back to you. Um, I love decorating for the spring and I love really bright bouquets. So have fun cutting with all of your different surfaces as you're using big styes. There really is a lot you can do with them. I'm excited to see what you make. If you choose to make anything with um, the cabbage rose, I would love to see what you come up with. So be sure to share them on Facebook or Instagram and use the hashtag MyMakingStory. That way we will be able to see it and share it with others. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.